Tom, it's awesome to have you on. Listen, there's a there's so much happening right now. And what I wanted you to speak to is the, the CARES Act. And there's so much to it. I mean, it's $2.2 trillion and it's probably going to go up uh, from there. But there is there's confusion. There's huge bottlenecks at, at banks. So let's let's talk about the let's, let's talk about the loan programs that that people are are trying to get. They would make a big difference right now, especially as things are still shut down. Yeah, for sure. So so let's start with the big one, um, which is the PPP loan, um, which is the Paycheck Protection Program. But it's referred to all over the everywhere as the PPP loan. And the PPP loan is this one where it's, it's basically two and a half times, um, sorry, 2.5 times your average monthly payroll. Okay, so you take last year's payroll, average monthly payroll. There's some um, interesting things about this computation. You know, you think, oh, okay, two and a half times. Well, what does that include? right and every bank is being different right now mm. so so remember here's here's what's going on the loan is coming from the bank it's guaranteed by the federal government but it's coming from the bank it's not money coming straight from the treasury and because of that the banks are scared frankly and so they're taking very conservative positions and remember they don't have that much capital on hand so yeah, it's going to be replenished, but they have to be careful about uh, parsing out those loans. And that's why you see somebody goes, well, I got my, my loan already funded. Yeah, that's true because it's probably a smaller bank you had a relationship with and they had enough capital, you know, for their, for their, you know, for their few customers, right? But when you go to a Bank of America or Wells Fargo and you hear them saying, well, look, we're only looking at these types of people and we're doing this kind of loan, well, they're gonna have very strict requirements and they're going to actually minimize the amount. So you have to be, this is one of those things where you go, well, it's, you know, it's two and a half times average monthly payroll, but let me give you an example of where this is an issue. First of all, it includes um, health insurance, okay? It includes health insurance. And the contributions that the employer was making to, to health insurance for employees. Absolutely, it includes health insurance. I don't know about the rest of you, but that's a lot of money for, for us. I mean, we have 10 employees and that's a lot of money, okay? Because we pay for every employee's health insurance. So if they're not including that, they're just taking the payroll, you're losing that, okay? Let me tell you a really big one. The law says that includes commissions and not just commissions to employees. So if you had commissions to employees, no big deal. It's going to be included in this in, in your payroll report, right? But it also includes commissions to independent contractors. The law is really clear on that. However, if you go to the Treasury website, guess what? It's not included. If you go to if you go to a Bank of America, guess what? They They're won't not include it either. Okay. Well, I don't. I know that for us, that's almost as big a number as this. So two and a half times is our commissions because we don't have we don't put we don't put our salespeople on on the payroll. They're independent contractors. That's what they want to be because guess what? They drank our Kool Aid. Okay, so they they actually do understand that it's better to be an independent contractor. So now you have these two things that that your bank may not be including in your loan co computation. Now, here's the thing is that remember, this is the loan computation, but then you have the forgiveness computation, okay? So forgiveness, remember that this loan, at least in part, gets forgiven. Well, guess what? <clears throat> so this is two and a half months times this, right? But the, but the forgiveness includes your, your eight, it's eight weeks, right? from when the loan is originated. So it's the date on your loan document that you're looking at. So it's eight weeks from then, and it's eight weeks of payroll, right? Plus insurance, plus commissions, 
So this, this not only can be funded, it can be forgiven. Hmm. So this is free money. And, and chances are your bank did not include this. Okay. This is why what I'm telling people right now is don't just go to a bank. You need to sit down with your CPA and you need a CPA who really understands how to calculate this because only CPAs are reading this bill. The bankers aren't reading the bill. The bankers have their set of rules, right? They're all about rules. They're all about risk. Okay. And they see this as a huge risk. They do. They see it as huge risk. They see that if they do the computation wrong, if the, if, if they don't, um, you know, take a conservative approach, then they may not get reimbursed. Right. So that's a big deal. And, and even if they, even if they get, even if, if they get reimbursed, they don't want to carry these loans on the books. These are, these are going to be a myriad of 10 or $15,000 loans. Once the forgiveness is done, you're going to have little tiny loans for two years that you're going to have to track and manage at a half percent interest. So it's a, it, from a banker standpoint, this is a terrible deal. I mean, it really is. They're doing it because their customers demand it because treasury. They're kind of being it. forced to do it in a sense, but they're really being forced to do it. Now on top of that, you also get plus utilities plus rent or mortgage interest, whichever you have. Okay. Well, so this is all forgiven. It's not included. So, so the utilities and rent and the mortgage interest that's not included up here, but, it, but if you use it for this, you know, you could have, <clears throat> you could end up actually sp spending more on the utilities and rent, frankly, in eight weeks. I mean, eight weeks of rent, if, you, if you've got, um, you know, a, a class A space, right, you're going to spend some money on rent. You're going to spend some money on utilities. So, you know, the, the idea here was, I think the idea was, look, this should approximately equal this. The idea was, let's, put it in there so that it's pretty much used up. The reality though, is that it, a lot of it depends on your bank. Um, we've been using a lot of uh, SBA loan consultants just because they know the banks better and, and for, for people who don't have an existing relationship. Now, if you have an existing relationship with a small bank, com community bank, uh, um, you know, a, 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 smaller, a smaller regional bank, okay, and you have loans with them and you have, um, uh, deposits with them and you do all your banking with them, you need to go to them. Okay. But you need to explain this computation. And I would suggest you go to them with your CPA to explain this because they don't understand it. Okay. You will get your loan faster through there than if you go through a consultant. Okay. That's my experience so far. And you know, like we were talking about earlier, Patrick, that we, um, are, it's new every day, right? So you're seeing all these bottlenecks. They're, they tend to be bottlenecks with the big banks, okay? A relationship with a smaller bank is going to get you your money a lot faster. And you're gonna have a little more flexibility here, I think, than with a big bank. So this is the big loan. Now, there's a couple of other things that you really ought to be applying for. Number one. Number one can I ask one question, Tom, in regard yeah. to the loans? Yep. So look, looking at the, the actual loan documents, yeah. Is it important to go through those to understand what provisions you're sign, you know, that are in there that you're signing? Oh, for sure. Signing and contracting, you know, for, contract for the sure. obligation. You, oh yeah. You, you want to make sure you go through those loan documents thoroughly. And I, you know, if, if you have anybody to have a look at it, maybe a lawyer, you know, but certainly your CPA should be looking at it to see if, if the money works out right. If the computation is right. Because a lot of this is math. Um, you know, some of it's law, but a lot of it's math. What, what this has really pointed out to me, um, I mean, you know, I, I spent a lot of time with uh, Robert Kiyosaki on the road and a lot of what we've been talking about over the last few years, it's been actually really prescient um, for this because he's been talk, we've been talking a lot about having a team, right? The Rich Advisors wrote, wrote, wrote a book on more important than money. It's about building the team. And if you had on your team a good banker, and a good CPA and a good lawyer, guess what? You'd already be funded. Mm -hmm. You would, and you'd have been funded at the maximum amount. This is a really good example of why the team is so important. And you can't just have one of these. 
You can't just, and, and you need a bookkeeper too, right? Because your bookkeeper is the one calculating all this, right? And you really should have a payroll company. A payroll company just produces these reports. That's why I never like a bookkeeper doing payroll. I think that's a terrible idea. Have a payroll company do payroll. Let the specialist handle it, okay? But have the specialist on your team. And they're producing those reports. That's great. Now, the problem is that most of the big, the big banks are just taking that report and that's all they're giving you, right? They're ignoring this um, and, and they're definitely ignoring this. So you, you really want to make sure that you've got that team together uh, when you do this. Tom, can you, can you speak to just one more thing about this loan? So the, there are some requirements in order for the, the eight weeks to be uh, for, for, forgiven. And it has to do with retaining employees, right? right? So this isn't, this isn't something where you can take money and then let people go because there's a penalty. Well, it's, it's a paycheck protection program, yeah. <laughs> right? You got to remember that, that this P is paycheck and this P is protection, all right? So this is all about um, employers keeping employees. And it, there's actually a, um, and I'll, I'll get back to what, you know, the reductions and everything, but there's actually an interesting quandary that employers and employees have, and that is, do I let people go so they can get the enhanced unemployment insurance or do I keep them and they get paid for eight weeks? But it's only eight weeks. What if the pandemic lasts two years? You're not gonna keep getting this every, every eight weeks. It's not gonna happen, okay? I, I really believe this is a one-time shot. This is not gonna happen again. All right, now they are, we, we were talking about this earlier, they are talking about adding money to it and I think they'll add money to it today. <clears throat> so I think they will add that $250 billion. $350 billion was never gonna be even close to enough. And what's good is they're actually recognizing that a lot of people are getting shut out because the big boys have all the money, yep. right? And because um, they gave it to McDonald's and Taco Bell and the franchise owners, all yeah. the franchises. They, the, so best lobbying in this bill was by the, was by Boeing, the airlines and the franchises. They're, they're the ones who lobbied the best. Boeing got a $17 billion bailout for their, their max issue. Um, nothing to do with the virus. Uh, the, the airlines got bailed out. Well, that was inevitable. Okay. Right. You don't want them failing. And then, um, and then the franchises got bailed out, right? And even, and here's the thing, by the way, there is no qualification for this, except that you're under 500 employees. That's it. If you're a franchise, you don't, you only, you don't, even, you only have to be, you don't even have to be under 500 employees. All franchises qualify. You could be at 10,000 employees and you'd qualify as a franchise. On top of that, if you're in the food service, then even if you're not a franchise, it's 500 employees per location. So like a- to No individual yeah, location so, so, usually so has so that very close enough. So take, for example, Harris Casino, right? If they have less than, because they're included in this category. If they have less than 500 employees per casino, they get this. So uh, you know they already have their money. And that's where when you see, oh, $100 billion was gone on Monday, that's who it went to, okay? It didn't go to the little guys. It went to the big guys. Okay, and that was always going to happen. So uh, it's it's really good news that they're adding that they're it looks adding very very likely they're adding that two hundred fifty billion dollars, which they absolutely need to do. Okay, and they they may need to add more than that because you know the independent contractors can't even apply for this loan until Friday. Well, my prediction last week is three hundred fifty billion dollars is going to be gone by. It's going to be gone by then, yeah. So they have to add money, you know, if they're really going to get to the independent contractors at all, or even, you know, even the, the routine small business that is just having a tough time finding a bank to take their loan, right? To give them the loan. All right. Any, um, so let's talk about the reduction. So the reduction, it's not as onerous as you think. First of all, there's two reductions. There's one reduction based on reducing payroll. And there's another deduction based on reducing number of employees. So a lot of people have given, made payroll reductions. Okay, they said, look, we're gonna reduce your pay by 20% um, until this is over because otherwise we can't survive and that's the only way we can keep you employed. All right, so um, it's okay to do that. Once you go over 25%, 
the excess reduction over 25% directly offsets what's forgiven. So if you go over by $10,000, you lose $10,000 of forgiveness over the 25%, okay? So that one's actually not very onerous. I mean, I don't see a lot of companies doing more than 25% you know, pay, pay reduction. Plus the interest rate on, on whatever, you know, the payback period and the interest rate is, is. Oh yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a two year, it's a two year payback period and it's a half percent of interest. I mean, it's, 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 I mean, it's like a free loan anyway. Right. Okay. Second of all, if you if you actually reduce full-time empl uh, employee equivalents, FTEs, full-time equivalents from, from what you what you had a year ago at this time, basically. So you're looking at last year, between February and June compared to this year, compared to your eight weeks. And if you reduced your number of, um, your, your overall payroll, okay, your number of employees, um, then you get, a, you get a percentage reduction of the entire amount of forgiveness. So you're not just reducing this piece, you're reducing this piece and this piece too, okay? So you're reducing everything, okay? So if you go, let's say you are, you're at 90% of where you were a year, um, a year ago, then you 10% you, will not be forgiven, okay? So that's a much bigger deal for people, um, particularly um, you know, people who are thinking, I, I mean, I was on a call yesterday with a, a big mastermind group and uh, business owners and they're going, you know, some of them are restaurant owners. Do I, do I let them go? You know, I've kind of carried them for now, but do I let them go or do I keep them and keep them on this? I mean, frankly, it's a tough decision. And my answer, of course, is sit down with your CPA and do the, run the numbers. You know, it, it, when you, once you have data, everything's less scary. One of the reasons this whole virus is scary is because we don't have data. The more data we get, the less scary it becomes. Right, and the same is true with your numbers. The more data you have, the less scary it becomes. So sit down, this is a time, really a time in the world to know your data. And that's why the bookkeeper is so important, right? Because you, you know you have accurate data. So make sure that you, you sit down with your CPA and, your, um, and, and run, you know, run those numbers. Okay, sh should we go to the next, next one? Yeah, go quick? to the next one. And I just want to make a point that you, your network of uh, wealth ability accountants are doing are doing consultations right now, correct? Uh, we are, and in fact, um, a lot of no, we haven't mandated made it, mandated this. It's not a franchise, okay? <clears throat> but a lot of our members are uh, doing consultations on this and not charging. It's it's free. I know for our firm, we spent all last week. We did no tax returns. We spent all week on the phones with clients. We're not billing anything for it. We just feel like that's our civic duty and our duty to our clients to take care of them. You know, it's like adding insult on injury when you, you know, when you bill for something like that, right? And even and now's though- it, Now's know, the time to give. <laughs> it is. Even the loan consultants are billing on the back end, right? They're not billing anything up front. They're, they're taking a percentage of what is funded. So, you know, if you don't get the money, you don't have to pay. So, you know, I think people are, for the most part, I think people are being pretty generous. Um, even California, sending ventilators to New York. That's, I think that's extraordinarily generous. Um, okay, so let's look at uh, really two other things I want to talk about. First of all, and, and they both relate to the same category. And this is the EIDL program. And there's, there's actually three parts of this program. Now, this changes daily, okay? So originally... This is an emergency injury disaster loan. And originally it was up to $2 million. And I believe it still is, but this is a regular loan. This is an SBA loan. So you have to qualify for it. You have to qualify for it. Um, and um, there are some restrictions on it. You have to have been damaged. The, the PPP loan, you don't have to show any damage. Okay, I'm telling all my clients, you need to apply for it, right? Even if you've done better, during this time period, because the reality is you're going to pay for it anyway um, through your taxes. So you, you ought to take, seriously, you ought to, I mean, don't say, no, I'm not going to take this because I don't need it. Because the reality is, okay, but you don't need it, but you're going to need it just to pay the taxes on this bill, yep. right? So, um, <clears throat> and we don't know what's going to happen. So, you know, people that don't need it now may need it in a month or two. 
Anyway, this is, this is a $2 million SBA loan. It, it's not as restrictive as some of the other loans as far as, um, you know, like a, a regular 7A loan. I mean, seriously, they collateralize everything, including your firstborn son or daughter. You know, they take an arm and a leg. And I mean, they even take your house, right? And a personal guarantee. This does not have all those requirements. So it is a good loan. I, I think it's the best loan that's a true loan in this package. There's also an SBA Express loan, by the way, that is even less onerous than this one. And everybody can get that as long as you qualify. Okay. And, and of course, these are bank loans. So remember, the bank has to agree to this. They're going to do this after they do the, um, all of this is going to happen after the PPP loans are done. Okay. After they're done, the banks are replenished, everything like that. You'll start seeing this money, but you won't and see You can have money. both. You can have both, but you, you're not going to see this money for quite a while. Okay. Now, there's also a $200,000 loan under the EIDL, okay? This is also, this is the same loan, but it has much looser requirements on it. So if you just need a $200,000 infusion, this is a, this is, pro, and you can show that you've been damaged, this is probably a really good option for you, okay? Now, here's the option that everybody should be doing, and that is that there is a $10,000 grant $10,000 grant. This is, by the way, in addition to the PPP. Now, if you get the grant, the grant reduces the amount of the forgiveness on the PPP. PPP. So what it means is, is that your PPP now, $10,000 of it, is going to be a loan. That's what it means. It reduces, it, it, unless you have extra, right? But it reduces the amount of forgiveness on the PPP. And that's the loan that's gonna be half a percent payback over, over? Over two years, right. But this is a $10,000 emergency grant. And this, uh, now I haven't seen, seen people getting it yet because it comes directly from the SBA. And of course the SBA has just been overwhelmed. This is supposed to be done within three days. I know for a fact it hasn't because I applied for one on Friday and it has not come yet. <laughs> so, um, you know, this is something that um, really people ought to pay attention to because $10,000, especially take an independent contractor, $10,000 can tide you over. That, that can be enough. Yep. You may not need the PP to, to go through the PPP process. This may be sufficient for you or, or this may be exactly what you need if you're an independent contractor or a small business. So, you know, the, the whole focus has been on the PPP that doesn't mean it's the only thing available. And so that's the key. Sit down with your CPA. They're your, your they're, basically I look at CPAs right now as the financial positions of the crisis, right? I mean, we're the ones who we've read the law, we understand the law. And like you say, we have a network of CPAs, 35 um, firms across the country. And, you know, we're, we're just dying to help. We actually, um, if, if you don't mind, I'm going to tell, tell you that, uh, Thanks, yeah. Uh, we have an offer for April because we really want, we see this, we see, we see all of these opportunities, but we also see another opportunity. And that is people seem to have a little more time right now because they're not commuting. They're not going to dinner at night. They're not going to movies, et cetera, et cetera. And we're going to have some financial opportunities in the next 12 months that are going to be at least as good as 2008, nine and 10. Oh. Most likely so, a lot better. <laughs> so if you're not prepared for that, you are going to miss out again. Okay. A lot of us missed out in 2008, 9, and 10. I'm one of those. Okay. I had all of these sure. single family homes and I was just trying to get out from under that. Right. Okay. I, I, I swore I was not going to let that happen again. So now we have to be financially prepared for this. And it's not just about money which by the way, there's this opportunity to borrow $100,000 from your IRA, penalty free and, and interest free and tax free for three years, right? You can borrow it and put it back and not pay tax on it. Um, but there's, there's gonna be all these opportunities. So what we've decided is, but we know that it's a window. It's a short window in order to get focused and put a plan of action together. And as you know, that's what we do for a living is wealth and tax strategies, right? So what we've decided to do is we're going to give away your first personal income tax return if you sign, if you do a wealth, if you sign up 
um, for a wealth and tax strategy in April. And the reason we're doing that is because we see this window. Remember, your taxes aren't due until July now, right? So you've got this window between now and July to do something. You've, now you've got, then you've got this window between now probably third and fourth quarters when we're gonna start seeing these deals come up. So you, ought, you really need the financial education. We just want to encourage you to take some action now. And so our members have agreed that they're going to give up their fees for your personal tax return because what happens is, is when you do a, a, like a tax strategy and a wealth strategy and then you have the same person do the tax return, oh my heavens, it makes, it, it makes the implementation and, and the effectiveness of that so much greater that we just decided, you know what, we're going to test this out for the month of April because this is when we need to be giving. And so our members are all saying, yeah, I'll give away a, a free tax return um, just so that I can encourage people to get in this process because I do think this is a huge, huge opportunity. And if you miss out right now, I think you're going to be kicking yourselves for the rest of the life, re rest of your life. And, right I, and I'd also add to that, we're in the beginning stages. I mean, the, the economic impacts have, have yet to really be seen. And that's, and that's globally. It's not just in the United States. Right. And who knows what's going to come down the line with other stimulus packages, other incentives. Because in, in the end, the majority of, of people are employed by small business owners. And they're the ones that are right now trying to figure out what to do. And of course, things are going to uh, change. People are going to innovate. There's going to be new ways of doing business. At the same time, this year, it, it's, going to, it's going to be somewhat painful. And I believe that there's going to be continued opportunities that have to do with your wealth strategy, with specifically your tax strategy. And so having something and having a team member in place right now to help out with that is, is more important than ever. So let me throw out another. It's complicated. This thing's like a thousand pages long, isn't it? And you've it's read eight, it. It's 854 it's pages. And yes, I read it multiple times and I'm still learning new things about it. Okay. Um, but here's the other thing. Uh, and, and this hit me first when I was... Um, my first job in industry, not public accounting, but industry... Um, was with a company who had, <laughs> the year before, this is back in the savings and loan crisis days, they had bought, they paid $2 billion for a savings and loan that went to zero within two years. And so they put a hiring freeze on. I was the only hire in six months in a Fortune 500 company. Imagine that. And my first job was to let people go. I had to let half my staff go. Well, it was very similar to this, right? Only in this case, people are getting let go and they're not getting big severance packages, right? Because there's no money to, to give you, right? So what happened, what I, I, I remember thinking about this and I'm going, well, wait a minute. So these people did nothing wrong. Same right now, right? You, I mean, you could be been the best employee in your entire shop and, and, and you're basically have no job right now. You're on unemployment. No fault of yours, except for one thing. You only had one client. You only had one customer. You had an employer that was your one customer. You think about it now. I know you deal with banks all the time, Patrick. If you had a business owner, if a business owner had a single client and they went to a bank for a loan, would the bank ever give them a loan? Never. Too much risk. Wait and yet you think about it. Every single person who's an employee has one customer. And so this just points this out. So I'm thinking, look, now you're online right now, right? More people are online than ever. You realize that video is easy. You know, I'm learning that, wow, YouTube's easy, right? I, we were just talking about that. I mean, even old people like me, elderly, I'm elderly. So even elderly people like me are, are discovering YouTube and, you know, other things. Well, if that's the case, think about how easy it would be to start a business and have many customers, thousands of customers. I, I know you have thousands of, of clients. You have thousands of customers, Patrick. So your risk, if, if one, one, I mean, you have the risk that one customer will not just leave. You have the risk that they're going to die, right, in the life insurance industry. So, but, but if you lose a customer, that's okay because there are other customers and there's more customers. Whereas if you lose a job, what do you do? So now is the time to be thinking about, okay, maybe I ought to be starting a business. There are huge tax advantages to it, as we all know, 
I mean, you get to deduct stuff, you get to deduct part of your home, you get to deduct your car, you get to deduct some of your meals. I mean, there's all sorts of, some of your travel, you get to deduct all sorts of stuff you couldn't deduct. Your taxes go way down as a business owner. And on top of that, you have that much less risk. So now is the time that, you know, one of the big things I'm encouraging people to do is, yeah, we've got these investment opportunities coming. We also have enormous business opportunities right now because people who are, and the big word right now is pivot, but people who are really shifting how they think and changing as you, call, as you would use in your business, of course, changing their paradigm, mm -hmm. right? That's a big deal because you have, we, I think the innovators are the ones who are gonna come out of this winning and it's going to be the people who do the same old thing, same thing I did last year, that are going to come out the big losers. And so the question is, you know what? Uh, was it Ron Emanuel said, never let a good crisis go to waste, right? I don't like the saying. At the same time, there's a point there that maybe we ought to be looking at, um, yes, we want to protect ourselves. We want to protect our loved ones. I, I, I'm particularly vulnerable um, for this because of my, um, my immune system and, and same with my wife. And yeah, we want, we want to take care of health. At the same time though, we not just want to take care of our finances for now, we want to take care of it for the future so that the next time this happens, it, there will be a next time. 1990, 2000, 2008, 9, 10, 2020. There is a pattern here, folks. And it's going to happen again in 2030. Okay, so don't believe it won't. This, will, it, this time it was a pandemic, last time it was real estate, the time before that it was stocks. Who knows what it's gonna be, but it's always, as long as, uh, as long as the economy is the way it is, we're gonna keep doing these things. And so now's the time really, I think, to get prepared. So that, that would be my big, you know, if I had any words of wisdom, that would be it. Now's the time to get prepared. For well, you, you had mentioned something in the beginning, Tom, which I think is, vi which is vital, which is, which is mindset. Right. There, there's all the reasons to be incredibly afraid right now. And that's all that we see on TV. It's all that we see in news has headlines. It's all we see on social media. At the same time, there are many others that have a perspective that this is a wonderful time to reinvent yourself, to take advantage of opportunity. It's a time where you know the inefficiencies and, and waste are flushed down the toilet. And, and that's where you know people start to grow. I mean, you don't really grow when things are, are all is, is, when they're easy, right? These are the times where you're, uh, you can grow the most, but it's a, it's a choice you make and it starts with, a, with your, your perspective. And I believe that, yeah, employment is going to change. Education is going to change. Investing is going to change. Real estate is going to change, but it's going to change for the better. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's all good. It's all good stuff, you know, and, you know, I, I hope everybody's get, you know, taking care of themselves, protecting themselves, protecting their neighbors, especially protecting us elderly people. Um, we appreciate it, by the way. Those of you who are wearing masks and gloves and, and uh, washing your hands and all that kind of stuff, it doesn't just affect you. It affects, you know, my wife and I, you know, when we have landscapers come, you know, we need them to be, take, you know, to take care of themselves right? Because they put us at risk. And, and so I, you know, really encourage people. I think you said it best is that now is the time to give. And so uh, we're just out there. I know you are too. You are Patrick. We're just out there giving whatever we can. And of course, all I can give is an explanation of the law. That's what I have to give, you know, a way to build your, build your wealth and reduce your taxes. But uh, anything we can do for Patrick, for you or your listeners, anything, um, they can just go to wealthability.com and, and schedule a call. Uh, all they have to do is click on the button, schedule a call, and it's a free call. Um, if they need a CPA, if they need help, anything, we don't charge for any of that. Um, we charge CPAs for that, but we don't charge the, we don't charge the, the public for that. So we're um, ver very happy to help any way we can. So Tom, we're, we'll link to the original uh, town hall meeting that you did that was right. really comprehensive as far as the, 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 this new bill. And, and then thank you for your generosity. We'll, we'll make sure we post all of the, the links uh, so that you can connect with uh, a wealth ability advisor and, and have a consultation. And Tom, thanks again. And I, I would say as this thing continues to you know, have its layers peeled, peeled back, uh, we'll post your YouTube channel as well. Uh, Cause I know awesome. that you're continually you. adding more and more videos yep. to that as you learn more about the bill. Absolutely. Yep. Thank you. Okay. Appreciate Thank you, Tom. It. Take care.